Hello and welcome to this edition of KPSN. Last weekend, our Lady Warriors volleyball team avenged a 3-0 defeat against the Franklin Panthers on their home court in a thrilling 3-2 victory. The COVID schedule provides back-to-back -back face offs in the same week, which means there's not much time to prepare for a rematch. Teams have to bounce back and stay focused, which is exactly what our Lady Warriors did. Emma Brooks had 30 digs in the match and scored five service points in the fifth and final set for the victory. Coupled with Lily Carlo's 15 digs, Ahuna James's 10 kills, and Nicole Coughlin's 20 kills and four service aces, the team was looking strong all around as they looked forward to their back-to-back -back face offs against Milford. It's like, it's sometimes good because like, you know, we just get to like get like just play the team like twice and then it's over with. But sometimes like it's hard because like even like if we just like lost to them, then we have to like hurry up and like gather ourselves together and like prepare for that same team in like in this like span of a week, which is really hard. But um, sometimes it's 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 okay, I guess. It's not really like there are like some advantages and like some disadvantages. So. I think it's like if you lose to them or if it's just a really tough game, um, they know your weaknesses and so you have to really prepare quickly for the next time you play them, but also vice versa where you can, you now know about their team so it's really easy to find holes in their defense and figure out how to adjust. The first Warrior Scarlet Hawks matchup ended in a 3-1 victory for our Warriors. Our girls volleyball team is looking to continue their hot streak with a big win in their second matchup against Milford tomorrow at 1 p.m. For like a team goal, we all wanted to win the Hawk really bad and we won it last year, but we had a three-way tie, so it wasn't as like rewarding, but I feel like this year we all really want to like take the title and not have to share it. We want to like just make the most out of all the time, so every practice, every game, I know we always just give 100%, like no matter what, especially knowing that we won't be playing next year. Yeah, and I like, I try and make the most of every moment we have, like even water breaks, like I'm always trying to laugh with the team because it's like, it's, it's like the end and we only have so much time left and you just got to make, take advantage of the little moments that you have together. Our King Philip Warrior football team remains undefeated with a 17-3 victory against Attleboro. Despite a mere 43 yards on offense and one first down in the first half, along with only one offensive play in the third quarter, the team still walked away with a win. Major highlights in the game were from senior Pat Zarba, who blocked an Attleboro field goal, and junior Crawford Cantog, who recovered a fumble and took the ball 72 yards to the house. In addition, sophomore Matt Kelly hit his first varsity football field goal of his career. On the punting team, senior Jake Silveria kept pinning back the Attleboro offense with his booming punts, including a 52-yard cannon. Crawford Kantov also managed to find his way into the end zone once again to put the game away. The boys continue to show their grit and team stamina through their disciplined defense and now await the 1-1 one -one Milford Scarlet Hawks on Saturday in hopes of holding on to that all-important undefeated status. The game is featured as the Hockamock Game of the Week as two of the top teams in the league right now go head-to-head. It is the first time these two teams have played in a while since Milford just moved up to the Kelly Rex division this year. The boys are going to have to play a very good game and they have been working overtime to prepare. As the season continues to progress, our Warrior track and field athletes have shown eagerness to continue honing in their skills, hoping to compete at the elite level once the official meets finally kick off. The runners have competed in a few scrimmage contests which have helped them fine tune their speed and endurance. Seniors Ava Pisani, Ali Ventramini, and Sofia Delvecchio have led the way for the girls, followed by stellar performances by junior Sydney O'Shea and sophomore Isabel Watson. For our boys, seniors Jovan Joseph, Jackson Fletcher, and Andrew Noak have displayed massive amounts of determination to improve on their personal best. While freshmen Nate Gebhardt, Neil McGrath, and Tommy Lamuccio, alongside many others, have shown that there is a bright future for KP track and field. Two weeks into the season, I'm feeling pretty confident. I know that coaches and captains are feeling confident as well. We've had two meets so far. We had a scrimmage meet where we just ran our normal events, and then we had a relay meet where it was focused on the efficiency of the relays, the handoffs, and all that stuff. We've had incredible times like all around the board from both boys and girls' side. We've had a bunch of freshmen get some pretty good times. We also had seniors, they've been showing up pretty well. And I think that 
if we continue on this path, we're gonna have a really good season. We're already competing at a really good level and it's just gonna keep going up from here. So I look forward to what the season holds. During a normal season, you're you're still trying to uh, beat, your, beat your time and trying to improve on your time. But the in-race aspect of it, like um, for me, uh, trying to uh, catch the next guy um, or uh, trying to keep pace with them and even when I, when you get the lead, just um, not letting anybody catch you is a big is a big driving factor during the race and a big mentality portion of it. And it um, it's really different and it's hard running by yourself. Uh, this year you just gotta really focus on your time and improving yourself, and that's that's the only way you're gonna get better. We're prepared, we're confident, and we're ready to compete. We've been following a really strict training plan as of late weeks and I think it's been really effective for our whole team. Aside from individual events, our relay teams have excelled tremendously, posting phenomenal base times for every split. The team will be having the first in-person meet at home next Thursday against Taunton. Washington, off the mark and it's over! It's March, expect the unexpected! Did anyone have the 15 seeded Oral Roberts Golden Eagles getting past the first round? Did anyone bank on the magic of Sister Jean? Let the madness and Cinderella stories continue. 64 teams have been whittled down to the Sweet 16, and the brackets have been completely busted. Oral Roberts is the first 15 seed to ever make it to the Sweet 16. Everyone's bracket is a little bit busted. My Final Four is actually all perfect right now. On uh, bottom of the top, we got Houston, Baylor. Alabama and Gonzaga still in it for me. My lead eight isn't looking too sharp. I had LSU upsetting Michigan, which did not happen. I had Illinois, which they got upset by Loyola Chicago. And I had Ohio State, which took a early first round exit to Oral Roberts. In terms of Cinderella stories, there are several teams that have the potential to make the magical run. In addition to Oral Roberts, number 11 seed Syracuse is still alive, along with 11 seed UCLA and 12 seed Oregon State. Two number one seeds still remain, which are Baylor and Gonzaga. Who knew a 101-year-old nun could be the key to a college basketball team's magic run? Jean Schmidt, otherwise known as Sister Jean, is a chaplain for the Loyola Chicago men's basketball team and may be their magic charm. Sister Jean's good luck started back in 2018 when the number 11 seed Loyola Chicago shocked the world and made a magical run to the Final Four. Now in 2021, she is 101 years of age and might be their good luck charm again. In the first round, number 8 seed at Loyola Chicago took down number 9 seed Georgia Tech 71 to 60. In the second round, they were matched up against the powerhouse number 1 seed Illinois. Sister Jean struck once again. The Ramblers took down Illinois 71 to 58 in a historic win. Loyola Chicago now has all the momentum and look to continue to make a run in this year's tournament with Sister Jean in their corner. Loyola's next game is Saturday against number 12 seeded Oregon State. I think Sister Jean, I think the story is amazing. A 101 year old lady still attending the basketball games despite the COVID, despite everything. And just being able to see a team that can upset some of the greatest teams in college basketball is just amazing to watch. Like, it's just the perfect story to watch during match, March Madness. The amount of brackets they have broken is in the millions. It's insane. I can't say I'm not rooted for them at this point. Uh, I really hope Sister Jean can go as far as they can. They've already proved themselves more than they ever could have. The Red Sox have one of the most hardcore fan bases in professional sports, and it seems like management has been taking advantage of it. Three years removed from a franchise record 106 wins and a World Series title with just three losses in the postseason, the Red Sox hope to make the playoffs after finishing last place in the AL East in 2020. The Sox managed to win just 24 games in a COVID-shortened season. Perhaps the only positive is that the season was only 60 games. Fan favorite Andrew Benintendi is now a Kansas City Royal, JBJ is suited up for the Brewers, and Alex Cora is back on Jersey Street. Xander Bogarts, Rafael Devers, and slugger J.D. Martinez will be relied on for their experience and leadership. Bobby Dalbeck made his MLB debut last year, becoming the first player in MLB history to record a five-game home run streak in his first 10 games. There's no doubt this lineup can rake, but the concerns lie in the pitching. One of the best pitchers in the league, Chris Sale, will likely be out until June. Eduardo Rodriguez missed all of last year, and Nathan Avaldi looks to build on his solid numbers from 2020. 
The bullpen has acquired some young depth but lacks a standout closer. Perhaps a closer by committee will have to be their approach. This team has a lot of wild cards, but Alex Cora said he believes they can play in October and the fans are relying on hope. Opening day is coming up next week on April 1st. That'll do it for us this week. Good luck to our Warrior teams that are in action against Milford this weekend. And by this time next week, we will be looking at the Final Four in the 2021 NCAA Tournament. There's a lot to look forward to, and we will see you back here next week. Thank <laughs> you.